السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ربش رحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفق قولی رب ضدنی علما اللہ مفقنا فدین ہو یو آل آئی ہوپ دیٹ آل آف یو بی فائن I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you in his safety, bless you with health and prosperity, keep you safe from every illness, evil and tribulation. May he keep us steadfast on religion and grant us true understanding of his religion so that we can avoid being misguided. Inshallah, today we will learn the truth about wishing and celebrating New Year. Celebrating happiness is the human nature. A believer should always be happy and satisfied. Being happy is a different thing, but imitating and celebrating a festival of non-Muslims is like following them. As we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted us to celebrate happiness and to have a feast only twice a year, one on Eid al-Fitr and the other on Eid al-Adha. Appointing any other day for celebrating happiness is not allowed in our Sharia and neither did our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam nor his companions and followers appointed any other day except for the above two for celebrations They never celebrated birthdays Christmas Valentine's Day April Fool's Day Shab-e-Barat Rajab ke Kunde clay bowls etc nor did they declare the month of safar as rakat and never did they wish each other on the eve of new year or for that matter the eve of the first of muharram celebrating all the above days is like making changes in the sharia law celebrating some of the above days is like innovating in the religion it's the tradition of non muslims to celebrate and wish each other on new new year Every year a large number of Muslims get the festive spirit and celebrate New Year's Day whether it's Facebook status updates Twitter messages or even holding New Year's Eve parties but is this a harmless cultural practice with no faith based significance or a step in the wrong direction I believe that it is the latter there are mainly four reasons to this Number 1 it is technically inaccurate and pagan it's not the islamic way to appoint a particular day or time and celebrate the midnight of the 31st december the festivals of muslims are celebrated in the daylight and not in the darkness by cutting cakes or by opening the wine bottle caps celebrations by indulging in haram acts are demonic deeds which makes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upset it's a major sin gunah e kabira Number 2 what exactly is there to celebrate when the new year begins it's not necessary to celebrate it or share greetings it is a celebration that is cut off from the reality of the rest of the ummah any celebration by muslims needs to be put into context of the local and global situation of our fellow human beings the two eats amply do so by encouraging prayers dua for those suffering and alms to the needy However, celebrating the new year does no such thing. In reality, one year from our lifespan gets reduced. We get closer to death and we become one year older, which is not at all a happy thing. If it would be a happy thing, then the women would never lie about their age. Number 3, they may involve un-Islamic practices. Many people ask what's wrong in celebrating new year by cracking crackers releasing balloons in air dancing and hoopla it's wrong to do something which is not permitted in islam these celebrations mostly involve the things which are haram and prohibited it's a non muslim festival christians celebrate the christmas on 25th of december which is their religious festival their festivals are long lasting Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us from following non-Muslims celebrating their festivals and following them is an innovation. Non-Muslims never celebrate our festivals even though their prophets were ordered them to believe in the last prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and follow his sharia laws. The prophets who were sent to the Jewish and Christians indirectly asked their people to celebrate Muslim festivals but they never did it. Have you seen any Jew or Christian celebrating Eid al-Adha and making sacrifice? Then 
when we are strictly warned against these celebrations why do we feel proud by celebrating their festivals number 4 it is against the spirit of islam if the poor and needy were helped in this festival if they were fed or if any charity work was done then it would be understandable that the spirit and faith of muslims would ascend the opportunity to do well is not released indeed it is a great pity that on this new year's night nothing is done to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however everything that angers allah and provokes the wrath of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is done casinos get filled with gamblers people get drunk drunk drivers violate traffic rules there is a sudden increase in the rate of road traffic accidents and deaths entire night is spent in dancing singing music and every type of bad deed every deed is practiced which results in loss of faith and increase in the anger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they spend lots of money for these new year parties and fireworks although new year's resolutions could be made since we have lost a year of our life death is one year nearer to us so whatever mistakes sins and bad deeds had been done we will repent in the new year and won't repeat the mistakes and sins again instead of congratulating each other we should advise each other to repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now we should understand the purpose of our lives aims of our lives allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him and do good deeds good deeds are always according to quran and sunnah according to the path taught by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hence our new year resolution should be to learn quran and hadith to learn the translation of quran and tajweed to know prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we will study siratun nabi and follow the sunnah we will follow each and every sunnah we will recite bismillah before beginning of anything to get allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings we will spread salam abundantly and also initiate salam we will do zikr and make duas lavishly we will recite quran daily we will spend pay special attention to prayers like tahajjud ishraq and chaast regularly we will try to concentrate in salah more to spread the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only will we understand the deen ourselves but also preach it to others we will recite plenty of istighfar and durood we will be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his uncountable blessings on us we will be patient at the time of trials we will trust only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be happy with allah's will we will give charity abundantly to attain closeness in the sight of allah we will do deeds to make allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy we will be obedient to our parents we will sleep early and wake up early in the morning may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all these things easy for us amen now let's learn what we should do when someone congratulates us on new year scholars point of view in this regard is if someone congratulates you then say some dua and response but never be the first to congratulate others for this if a non muslim says happy new year then you can reply with may allah bless you it is narrated by imam ahmad bin hanbal if someone congratulates me i will reply with dua but i won't be the first and his statement was regarding muharram al haram the first islamic month So it's not permissible to be the first in congratulating non-Muslims on their new year. The Islamic year has no relation with any religious festivals. Still, it is not permissible for us to greet each other on it. However, it is not even an innovation as it is not being done as an act of religion. However, the non-Muslims celebrate the new year at the end of their religious festival, Christmas. The Christians celebrate the 25th of December as Christmas Day on the birthday of Isa alayhi salam. The whole world is in a festive mood and the same mood continues until the advent of the new year. Therefore, this is a religious festival of the Christians. Today, like these Christians, many Muslims also await impatiently for the new year. These Muslims have demeaned their own values and traditions and start celebrating the new year. 
this is totally prohibited we have to think about our hereafter and we have to avoid all these misconceptions we should not waste our precious time and money on these useless acts we have to be concerned that a whole year has passed from our life therefore we have to concentrate on our good deeds hazrat abdullah ibn masud radhiyallahu an said I don't feel such shame and remorse on anything except that a day on which the sun has set and a day has lessened from my life and there is no increase in my deeds. Hassan Basri rahmatullah alayhi narrated, O son of Adam, you are an assortment of days. When one day passes, it's like a part of you has passed away. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A person's goodness of Islam is that he leaves everything that is useless to him. Therefore, to celebrate the new year is a useless thing. We should not give any importance to celebrating it. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the best path to learn, understand and apply our religion and spread it to others. Ameen. Let's talk about new year and its resolutions in detail. How every new, new year forces us to ponder and reflect on how we spend our year. We tend to look at the past and retrospect. We think and contemplate about our gains and losses, our mistakes and accomplishments, our triumphs as well as our defeats. We tend to think about our decisions, the ones that worked in our favor and even those which might have seemed like a good idea to begin with but ended up as our errors. Our bad decisions, our mistakes and our regrets force us to introspect and self-assess so we can learn from them and improve ourselves. We sincerely pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this new year a source of benefit and success to Muslims all over the world. Amen. This new year should be a harbinger of good news and enable us to realize the reason for our existence so that we may um, so that we make such resolutions that make our tomorrow better and brighter i mean we need to realize that the person whose today is not better than his yesterday is termed as a loser so to be able to self assess we need to look at our obligations as a muslim We find in Sahih Muslim that gaining knowledge is obligatory on every Muslim. Therefore, our first resolution for the coming year should be gaining knowledge about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should strive to increase our understanding from cradle to grave and they should be our motto. Now, saying all this is easy and making empty resolutions is a global disease. We as Muslims should avoid that and cut down. and our words should carry weight therefore we need to take practical steps to gain knowledge of the deen there are a variety of options available maybe we can join a live class or there are numerous options for online learning as well and various groups on whatsapp and telegram are available all that is needed is the will and the means are many alhamdulillah We need to strive to spend our life according to Quran and Sunnah. The purpose and goal of a Muslim should be to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ensure that our lives are a source of comfort and ease for others as well. Aim to be righteous and busy ourselves in the accumulation of good deeds. The biggest blessing of our life is our time. To make our time fruitful and effective, we need to make a few changes in our lifestyle. In Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah No. 63-67, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has mentioned a few qualities of His righteous slaves or His Ibad Ar-Rahman. The first quality is that the servants of the Most Merciful are those who walk upon the earth easily. Imagine, we even talk about the way they walk. This means that even from the way they tread the earth, the way they walk reflects humility. They are humble in their demeanor and their contact. Therefore, we need to pay close attention to the simple act of how we carry ourselves, how we walk, our outward appearance or the impression we give is haughty or humble, arrogant or modest, overbearing or unpretentious. Since this outward appearance is a mirror image of our personality and we really need to keep that in check. 
The second quality mentioned in these ayah is, and when the ignorant addressed them harshly, they say words of peace. Subhanallah. Imagine what a quality this is. What a meaningful ayah that when the ignorant want to argue with them, the righteous do not get drawn into the argument, but remain silent and distance themselves from the situation. Not responding shows the strength of character and maturity rather than wasting time and energy. It makes more sense to wish them well, say salam and move on. And maybe later on, on finding an appropriate time, you can explain your point of view. But at that time, staying silent is a big virtue. The third quality of the Ibad rahman or the servants of Allah is and those who spend part of their night prostrating to their Lord and standing in prayer. Subhanallah. This ayah refers to the tahajjud prayers. Our third aim and goal should be to inculcate such deep love and yearning for gaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we get drawn to waking up in the middle of the night and prostrating to our Lord. The fourth quality of the people of Allah is those who say, Our Lord, avert from us the punishment of hell. Indeed, its punishment is ever adhering. We find out from these ayahs that hell is such a terrible place that even the thought of spending a few minutes there is scary and frightening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from hellfire. Amen. Therefore, we need to remember that our actions are responsible for our end. Our actions in this world will determine our final abode. So we need to think before we act. The questions we will be asked over there on the day of judgment will be simple, but their outcome will be very deep and long lasting. Questions like, how did we spend our lives? How did we do when, what did we do when we were young? How did we earn livelihood and where did we spend our earnings? Whatever we learned, how did we act on it? To be able to answer these simple questions well and to avoid having any regrets, we need to prepare our uh, from now onwards. We need to remember and value our time and make the best out of it. Busy ourselves in gaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we do not have any regrets in the hereafter. When we look at the life of Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions, we do not see them celebrating the new year. We need to follow their practices and avoid these celebrations and innovations. It is important to uh, to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we want to be successful in this life and the hereafter. The fifth quality of the Ibad rahman is that. And there are those who's the, who they spend do so not excessively nor sparingly, but are ever between that justly moderate. Therefore, our fifth resolution should be to incorporate moderation in our spending. Neither be a spendthrift nor a miser. Keep an eye on yourself and be conscious of your deeds and self-access them. Refrain from vices like jealousy, backbiting, lying, cheating, fighting, etc. Fix and improve our akhirah, our conduct, bring softness to our character and our speech. Do not take everything to heart and feel bad if others say, others say spiteful things. Not to keep negativity in our hearts, forgive and forget often and move on. Adopt good habits and work towards leaving the bad ones. Acknowledge them so you can leave them. Keep good company. Spend your time wisely and constructively. Now the question is, how to plan our time effectively? Well, you will get the guidance for this from the Quran and Sunnah. We should try to strengthen our bond with our Maker and our Creator, Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the ability to come closer to him and gain guidance from the Quran and the beautiful teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pray for halal sustenance and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from all kinds of haram. 
make janna our goal and work hard for getting there spend our time in the remembrance and zikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can gain higher ranks in janna ameen alhamdulillah we have completed our lecture for today may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all the listeners may allah grant health goodness and blessings in our lives wealth knowledge and children may allah grant you the opportunity for good deeds and make the path to jannah easy for you may allah forgive all our shortcomings and sins and be content with you all ameen ya rabbal alamin May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to do good deeds more than what we could and accept it from us. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.